Happy Saturday, Facebook. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm not even going to wait for people to jump on because I know it's super early. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are like, what's Missy doing up this early on a Saturday morning? Um, matter of fact, my daughter just jumped on and she's going to be the one who's going to kill me for doing this. But at this point in time, I promise Verizon, if it went down like this, this is what I was going to do. I'm not on here to cause panic this morning. I'm not on here to cause fear, but I'm on here to educate. I feel like it is my due diligence to come public this morning because what has occurred in my household. I feel like it's my due diligence to come on here and go public because of the millions of Americans who are not taking the coronavirus seriously the threat of spreading the coronavirus, and I'm going to give you a timeline. For those of you who think I'm doing this for anything other than to educate, well, (laughs) anyway, uh, here we go. So my daughter works at a call center in Wilmington, North Carolina. On March 13th, Verizon had to close a center in Elgin, South Carolina, due to an exposure at their call center. On March 14th, I began, by the way, it's the 21st today, so we can timeline this. On March 14th, I began making calls to the Verizon Corporate Center in New York, asking them what their game plan was to protect the hundreds of employees that they had sitting in call centers across the United States and how they were going to protect them because the CDC was then asking for not more than 50 people to be in a gathering. The CDC asked that we social distance. Verizon assured me that they were not having any incidents in Wilmington, North Carolina, and that there was nothing for me to worry about that I was being an overreactive mother. I'm Italian. I'm an overreactive mother. The next morning, I called the Wilmington location and asked them, what is your game plan to protect the 273 employees that you have sitting in your call center on the 15th of March? And I was told that they were taking every precaution, that they had wipes on the desks, that they had people wearing gloves. I called the corporate office again that Tuesday. I called the corporate office every single day. I went to the point as I threatened my daughter and told her that if she left this house and went to that call center, that I was going to put her out of my home because of the fear of her bringing it into the house. Well, it came into fruition. So yesterday afternoon, I was sitting at my desk. I work from home. My daughter Let me go back a little bit. Did not go to work last week. She called out on Tuesday. She called out sick on Wednesday. And on Thursday morning, she got a telephone call from her manager telling her that if she wanted to continue to have her job and to work, that she would have to come to the Wilmington Call Center to pick up her equipment at 8 o'clock on, on, okay, let me timeline, on Thursday morning. At 7 o'clock, my daughter got up and drove an hour to get to her job. She drove up there, arrived at the call center with over 150 people within a building. She was asked to sit down because they've decided now, you know, we're going to triage who gets their equipment first. So first, they give the equipment to all management because you know how important management is. Then they issued the equipment out to their IT team and then... And then they decided they were going to issue the equipment out to the employees. My daughter was asked to sit and take telephone calls in this building for almost six and a half hours before I lost it and called HR and said, you promised me you would not make my daughter, who's got asthma, who's got compromised lungs, and make her sit in that building. I want her to have her equipment now. They assured me again I was being an overreactive mother. (laughs) Yesterday evening, I was sitting at my desk, working, and my daughter walked into my office with a look on her face. 
And I promise you that no mother should ever have to see your child's face with an email in her hand stating, and I'm going to read it, okay? I don't know if I can read it and go off the thing, stating that they were closing immediately the Wilmington Call Center. Now, mind you, 270 people are being told they have to go to work every day and sit in this call center, even though Verizon has the capability to send every single one of these people home because they made a statement Friday. The president of the company made a statement last Friday that serving their customers was their most important thing. So I have, my daughter gets a letter stating that effective immediately, <laughs> anybody who couldn't come in to get their equipment would be paid for two months of work because they have had a positive, a positive coronavirus case. And they have several cases pending that they believe are positive, but they have not gotten back the information from the CDC. <laughs> so yes, ladies and gentlemen, I'm on this on this live this morning because my daughter, my daughter, my daughter has been exposed to the coronavirus because companies like Verizon, companies that are out there that are putting money in front of the health and the safety and the security of Americans are being told if you don't come to work, you're not gonna have a job. I don't care what words that the, the corporate office or the HR employees used with me. My daughter, my child has been exposed we spent seven days in this house. We have not left the house. We have not gone anywhere. We have practiced social distancing. We have done everything we could do to protect our family. But corporate America, corporate America is not protecting us. They are not protecting our people. So did I make this live this morning for what? I made this live to educate people. I made this live to let you know, hey, guess what? Melissa, Missy, Mel, whatever you call me, it's in my home right now. It's in my home. So those of you who think this is some joke, those of you who think it's no big deal, I just got off the phone with UNC Chapel Hill and the nurse up there had the audacity to tell me it doesn't matter how good my insurance is. It doesn't matter how much money I make a year. My daughter, despite being exposed, will not be tested will not be tested until she has got above 102 degree fever. So all we can do is separate ourselves from my child. So what about the 200, 200, listen to the words I'm saying, the 200 people that sat in that call center in Wilmington, North Carolina for the last week and a half exposed that went out into Wilmington, that went grocery shopping, that went out to eat dinner, and every person that they exposed. So I'm on here this morning, not because I'm looking for sympathy, not because I'm looking for attention. I'm on here this morning because you gotta stay away from other people. You have to protect the elderly. We have to protect the sick. This company didn't protect my daughter. This per company did not protect my home. And so now my daughter is upstairs and she's probably mad at me for doing this, but I don't care. She has to sit in her room for the next seven days. She cannot come out. She cannot hug me. I can't go in and comfort her. I can't tell her it's gonna be okay because you know what? She's been exposed to the coronavirus because companies are putting money before the safety of their employees. So I said all that to say this this morning. I am begging you, I am begging you to share this video and to let other Americans know I'm a real person. I'm a real person. My daughter is a real person in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Yeah, she works in Wilmington an hour away. So she carried it, if she's a carrier, all the way back down here, right? And she's had an exposure and you've already got three people in a building and a building of over 200 and some employees. So I said all that to say this, please share this video. Please wash your hands. Please practice social distancing because the nurse at UNC Chapel Hill just got done telling me it's not a matter of if people are gonna get it, it's a matter of when people are gonna get it.
So I ask you this morning that you lift my family in prayer and then you lift the people in Wilmington, North Carolina, the 200 families, the mothers and the fathers and the brothers and the sisters that went home that have been exposed to this. Shame on you, Verizon, for not protecting your people. And shame on any corporation out there who is asking or threatening employees to come to work to be able to take care of their family. But, 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 remember this. If we don't make it through this, there is no job to go back to. There is nothing to go back to. So I said that to say all this. Protect you. Protect yours. And please, please, please listen to what they're saying. Because it's not, maybe you are healthy. Maybe you're only 22 years old. Maybe you're only 30 years old and you have no medical conditions. But you know what? I have a dad in Upper Michigan who's on dialysis. I have a daughter who's upstairs, who's been exposed, who's got a lung condition. So with that being said, I did that this morning, not to hurt anybody, not to hurt my daughter. I did it so maybe someone out there will take this seriously. So maybe someone will choose not to leave the house today. Maybe someone will not decide to go to Walmart. Maybe somebody will listen to me. So again, Please share this video. Please take care of each other and please pray for America.